Our boards, who might by the way, we are, see as the number two quarterback. They're subject to change. We're subject to change these all the way up to draft night. Speaking of changing their opinion, Dan Orlovsky's on ESPN. He's a really good analyst. I saw somebody tweet this yesterday. Like, <clears throat> who cares what he says? He sucked. That doesn't matter. Sometimes the best analysts weren't good players. And sometimes the best players aren't very good analysts. I like what Dan Orlovsky uh, says on TV. I think he studies the film. I think it's worth noting. He's not the gospel. But he had been... A Drake May guy, Jason Bishop. Yeah. Tim Hasselbeck unabashedly <laughs> thinks Drake May is the best quarterback. And it seemed like Dan Orlovsky felt that way until he spoke yesterday. I thought that Caleb Williams was a lock at number one because I thought Drake May would be the guy. I was wrong in that. Jaden Daniels should be the guy. If I were the Chicago Bears right now, I would take Jaden Daniels out of LSU. That is not a knock on Caleb Williams. That is a plus and Jaden Daniels. I think, number one, when you watch all these guys play, the best thrower, the best guy against man coverage, ball placement-wise, is Jaden Daniels. Number two, when we're talking about explosive play, like guys who have to throw the ball downfield, what does it look like? Jaden Daniels throws the ball best downfield. And then number three, who's got the best pocket piece? When I say piece, it's P-E-A-C-E. All these guys are athletic. It's no longer like this plus. Every one of these guys has that attribute. The patience and the peace within the pocket, he's the best at. Um, Candidly, I think when it comes to what guy had the best game, none of these guys' games compare to Jaden Daniels against Florida. If you just watch that player versus the University of Florida, you would go, that's the best player in college football, and he's going to be the guy that transfers the best into the NFL. Caleb Williams is fantastic. I think Jaden Daniels is better. Hmm. Why, how did he flip the script? Didn't he watch Jaden Daniels before he said what he said about May? Doesn't sound like he it. He probably didn't do a deep dive into yeah. the tape. Well, I remember when we had Chris Doring on, I don't know, months ago, during the college football season, he mm-hmm. said he thought Jaden Daniels was the best player in college football. Right. He said that. Mm-hmm. And I respect Jaden Daniels, or I respect Chris Doring's um, talent evaluation of the SEC way more than Dan sure. Orlovsky. Yeah, I mean, he, that dude's plugged into it yeah. every every single I mean, weekend. Th- no one knows the SEC like Chris Doring, believe mm-hmm. me. Not, well, Dan Orlovsky does not. But maybe Orlovsky say- hadn't seen the Florida game. This is what he did against Florida. Yeah. LSU won that game 52-35. to <clears throat> He was 17 for 26 for 372 yards and three mm-hmm. touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He also had 12 carries. For 234 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, that's just athletic ma- freak. Sounds like it'd be pretty game. tough to beat that game. He basically had 600 yards of offense. Yeah, I can see where that game would sway you when you're when you're watching that game on. Yeah, right. I mean, he won how the Heisman. How could it not? He won the Heisman for a reason. I mean, he put up great, great numbers. I actually saw that this yesterday with Orlovsky. <laughs> I watched a little of his comments, and I just started just having a nightmare that the Bears took him. And then now, <laughs> now, now you got to take Command either mayor. Or you're, stuck with you're stuck with DC. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't want. I don't really want him. I don't really want Caleb. Hope, wow, you, know, you have your heart set on Jaden. Kinda. He's just so he's just so multifaceted in his game. I don't know. I don't want to spoil my rankings. I watched all of the guys on film yesterday. Now, I watched two minutes of each of the guys, okay? It wasn't I extensive. I didn't watch full games. I didn't watch, you know, 25 games worth of film. Caleb Williams is pretty spectacular. Okay. Yeah, I think he's, he's spectacular. He'd be a nice <laughs> consolation prize if the Bears took Jaden Daniels at number one overall. I, hope, I just hope and they And the don't. thing which jumped out at me about Caleb versus a lot of the other guys, some of his spectacular plays are with dirty pocket and guys in his face. And it's hard to find that on film with some of the other guys. Like, a lot of times, if you watch 10 throws from Jaden Daniels, perfect pocket in all yeah. of them. Well, that's the knock, though, against Caleb, is that he, he his time to throw is one of the longest of yep. the top guys. And he was passing up the easy play and just yeah. hanging in there, hanging in there, hanging in there. There may be a red flag. And that window's yeah. going to shrink I'm just saying that some the of the NFL. throws he makes is with, like, guys coming right at him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you, uh, if you have the bravery to stand in there and deliver the ball downfield with the pass rush coming at you, GMs are gonna they're gonna love that. Now that guy we level. had on the show earlier this week, Daniel Kelly, who mm-hmm. took Caleb Williams off his board, which right. seems a bit extreme. What was his big reason for that? Do you remember? 
it was a combination of what he sees on film with the taking too long to throw the ball and the off and the, the, field, off stuff. the field stuff. Um, yeah, he really is not into Caleb Williams because I think his latest post is all about how he doesn't have an agent and how Caleb's dad, I believe, is a former agent, and they're already like look trying to find loopholes in, I guess, the rookie deals as far as you know how long it should be. You're like, it sounds like he's painting him as a nightmare to deal with. Yeah. But what I was going like, to say is all that the way around that scout does kind of point out what you say is that he doesn't take. The gimmies. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you can coach that or not. I think I'm just saying we do make spectacular. We do emphasize the um, the audio of analysts who are anti Drake May more than the pro Drake pro Drake Mays. We 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 played Hasselback. Are That's you, the only guy we've here, ever he's played. He's here to give Drake May are you shine. Drake? No, I just think you got to play both sides. You yeah. secretly dating him or something? I don't understand. <laughs> are, are you are you going to play Joel Klatz? Well, how was that? How was that anti Drake May? That was just Jaden Dan. No, no, Dan on J- he Daniels. feels like there's a very anti Drake no, no. May sentiment he, out there. He, he didn't even mention Drake May there right, pretty right. much. But that doesn't mean he's anti. I yeah. mean, he 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 was a pro Drake May guy. Then we played the audio a few weeks ago, and now. It's Jaden Daniels is better than Drake May. Well, I let's, can tell let's you. Talk, let's let's hear some of the audio of the people who think Drake May is better than Jaden Daniels. Well, I can tell you the rest of what Orlovsky said, mm-hmm. which included his analysis on Drake May, summing it up, but said that his feet are everywhere mm-hmm. and that he would be best served, a la Jordan Love, sitting, sitting behind, behind somebody him. for a couple of years I to get those fundamentals right. Here, here's the FanDuel odds currently of the number one pick in the draft. At minus sixteen hundred, is Caleb? Is Caleb Williams? If you think Jaden Daniels is going to be the number one pick in the draft, he's plus twenty five hundred. Jump on it. I, I hope. And he's then not. here's here are the odds for the number two pick. Um, I guess this is just one drafts or mm-hmm. one betting site. Drake May. Um, Drake May is minus one thirty five. Jaden Daniels is plus one forty. So obviously, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty close. it's pretty close there. At number two, but number one, it's overwhelming with Good. Caleb Williams. Take him. Yeah, take him. You you deal with me. <laughs> oh, I think it would be manna from heaven if he slid to number two to Washington. I don't know. Well, if if you think it's a possibility, jump although on it. it doesn't worry me as much the off the field stuff. Mm-hmm. He, I I just I, I would have to do a deep dive into his work habits. I know that he said yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, that he wants to be a legend. He wants to be immortal. And the and the only way you do that is by being a great great player. So to me, that would seem like he's committed to being a great player. I I, I don't know his level of commitment. I think he's pretty committed. I'm from sure what he I've is. heard. I mean, I know he worked with a local guy, the math guy that we know um, for years, at, at, just at, at the quarterback skill set. Who? Bosha. Chris. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, we should get Chris on the show. Yeah. Let's talk about him. Going to be interesting. Look, I, think I saw clips of, yesterday. A lot of the negatives with Caleb comes from the, the personality traits, right? right? And kind of the immaturity of how he handled some things. If he wasn't like that, if you know, if he was just the, the perfect kid all year long, um, I, I doubt some of these analysts would have dropped him. But Maybe, but maybe. you still have. I mean, I'm not a big height guy. I don't really care. Mm-hmm. But he, he, you know, he didn't get any taller. He's 6'1". Yeah, you're right. And, I do care. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the decision-making thing where, or, you know, where he has spectacular plays, but that's because he's not getting rid of the football quicker. I can't remember who it was, but somebody said they walked next to Caleb through the hallways at the combine, and they, they said, he's taller than Bryce Young, but not by a lot. <laughs> and that that concerns me. Yeah. Well, it's, that... it's, I mean, I think his talent can overcome it, but the slight frame worries me a little bit. The other yeah. thing that the Daniel Kelly pointed out was, so Caleb didn't play in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. So in the bowl game, they played a pretty good defense. I think they played Louisville. And the and guy who filled in, in for him like came six in through touchdowns. six TDs. I know. <laughs> yeah. So you just How wonder. How much is his system? Exactly. Yeah, I know. Believe me. That registered with me, but too. But you know what? You can. T- that kid was probably very highly recruited. Probably. And then, number two, you got to throw bowl games kind of out. You right. don't know how many guys actually played for They only Louisville. had two non-starters not playing. Who, Louisville? Yes. On defense? Yes. Okay. So they had the majority of their starters out there. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll, but we'll you're see. probably right that the kid, look, if you're going to USC and you're playing for uh, Lincoln uh, Lincoln Riley, 
You're yeah. probably a, a, a good recruit. He probably wasn't yeah. a two star. Right. He's probably a five star waiting in the wings. No question about that. But it is interesting. They pl- you plug and play. Yes. Put the next man up. And he puts up. Yeah. You know, it's just crazy a machine numbers. out there. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's this a wild year for quarterbacks. It is. It's going to be crazy. I, I was going to say that, and I, not just the ones that are going to be drafted. It's going to be wild to see where guys like Fields end up, where Kirk Cousins ends up. This is kind of the fun part about us all coming up with the rankings and watching mm-hmm. it. I remember EB talking about this 20 years ago, and mm. I agree with him. When we were first going to games and having field access, mm-hmm. we would see the quarterbacks throw, and you couldn't, I mean, unless really you saw their number or their face, you couldn't tell, like, oh, well, that's so-and-so versus so-and-so. They all throw really well. And yesterday I saw clips of J.J. McCarthy and Penix throwing in the hallway at the combine, like just warming up. They're throwing laser beams like thirty yards into like a different tunnel. Well, I mean these are well, they these are be. power five yeah. college yeah, quarterbacks. I mean, you're surprised these guys yeah, have I mean. in arms. It's but I think I remember specifically that the one I always talked about was Casey Weldon was throwing. Right. Right. And I can't remember who the starter was at the time. For the was it for the Bears? No. They were playing the Bears. Yeah. Maybe Brad like, Johnson. It might have been Brad Johnson. I mean, but none of these guys are known for having big arms, but I just couldn't distinguish. Right. They, when they were throwing, and I'm standing right next to them, and it's not like I'm an idiot. They, I just, I, they throw similar balls, whoever it was. <laughs> maybe it was Kent Graham. I can't remember who it was. Tony Bank. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it was hard for me to distinguish. I mean, one guy was bigger than the other guy. But we'll figure it out. He played for the, for the skins between 98 and 2000. My, I feel like that's like Tony Banks, Kent Graham era. Hey, do you guys want to hear Sounds Joel Klatt right. talking about Drake May so oh, Jason yeah. doesn't think we're trying to like sabotage his, yeah, 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 sabotage yeah, his draft style? Although, to be clear, I mean, honestly, I don't to be really clear, care, but Jason Joel Klatt, <laughs> I think you showed me his board, has Drake May third, right? No, incorrect. He second? Had, he had Caleb Williams one, May two. two. Okay, second. And right ahead of Jaden. Drake May um, is as good as I've seen in a long, long time. Let me put it to you very simply. If it wasn't for Caleb Williams, Drake May would be the slam dunk number one pick in this draft. And and I don't think that it's that close. You know, I, I think that these two guys are, are separated from the rest of the quarterback pack, even some of these other really good players. Th- this guy has talent like like I haven't seen in a long time. He's a better college version of what Josh Allen was in college. He makes throws from the pocket, outside of the pocket. You know, he, his ceiling is so high. Now, granted, I might be spoiled because I saw him live one time, covered their Holiday Bowl against Oregon. Those of you watching uh, this show are seeing some of those highlights. He made a couple of throws with guys. By the way, they had some guys opting out. They didn't have a lot of great players on the outside. And this dude made some throws against a really good Oregon team that blew my mind, like especially for a young quarterback. They blew my mind. His ceiling, he and Caleb Williams make plays and make throws that other guys cannot make, both on schedule and off schedule. I would love for you now, just for our audience it's people here, are all over the place. Out of it, can you play and another you... analyst trashing Drake May? <laughs> right. I would love well, to hear Mar- play, back Merrill to back. Hodge. Yeah, play play the Hodge or anybody because he he didn't like him, right? What did he say? Yeah. What did he say? He said he, he, said he, he wasn't a good athlete. And, yeah. See if you play that back because it's Too amazing inconsistent. how the same guy can have people so vociferously different. Yep. And then play Randy well, Mueller because he crushed him. Well, then, he's Mac Jones. But it's and it's with all of them. Because, <laughs> I know. I, I mean, know. we had the one guy who said just, I'm not Caleb was, was a. Yeah. But we had, the one guy I can't remember his name was Daniel Kelly. Danny Kelly had. Caleb Williams is a fourth rounder. I know. It's crazy. And Joe Klatt has him as his number one overall pick. Yeah, like special. The... Yeah, it's, I know. It's, nuts. it's crazy. It's the hardest position by far to evaluate, right? It's just I wouldn't touch me. I wouldn't I wouldn't grab May. I wouldn't draft him in the first round. And there's a <clears> bunch of things that bother me. He's extremely inconsistent as uh, his accuracy. His processing inconsistent. Um, he's not extremely athletic. I think I find him more stiff. He's got a longer throwing motion, which allows more hits in our league than he gets in college. And then you hear Tim Hasselbeck retort and say, I don't know what Merrill Hodge is watching. Does he have the ACC network? Yeah. 
And, and who's Hasselbeck's number one guy? Who's Tim, Drake May? His yeah. over he's, Caleb. He's a yes. Drake May stand. That's so crazy. Man. Him and Jason Bishop. All... He basically says Drake May's Andrew Luck. Yeah. I don't think he is, but maybe. I, well, I'm we're going to reveal in, our board. I'm not putting him in Andrew Luck's class. I we'll just, reveal our board. I think that it's crazy if you, for guys like Merrill Hodge, who say he's not athletic. He, no, he said he's not extremely athletic. He come, His brother played baseball at Florida. His two brothers played college basketball in North Carolina. His dad played quarterback in North Carolina. He comes from a more athletic family than all these guys. So to say he's not an athlete, I think is just He didn't wrong. say that. He said he's not extremely athletic in his opinion. Well, I mean, you know, that's how all many guys relative. are extremely athletic? You're not, uh, Jaden Daniels, here's what I, I know. Okay, that's athletic. one guy. You're not going to like Caleb Williams. on my board. Caleb Williams is not extremely <laughs> he's athletic. He's not on your board, right? He's on my board, but. <clears throat> oh, I thought he was a foobar. <laughs> he's he's kind of hanging on. Which is <laughs> one of the latest Oh, spots. because of the Mac Jones yeah. comparison. Yeah. All right, we'll do that coming up at 720. We'll reveal our board. But coming up next, your chance to win tickets to go see <clears throat> Luke Bryan in concert at Jiffy Lube Live. Call in now at 800 636 1067 for the morning matchup here on the Junkies.